everybody. Welcome to my second recording of this fucking video. It's my 100 subscribers video, finally. So, I'd originally said that I was gonna do this a while back in October, and I kinda failed. At that time when I said I was gonna do it, I had gathered all the supplies and I had 100 subscribers. Uh, no, I had 100, let's see you, my dog. I had, I had 101 subscribers, and since then we have grown slightly to 107. I, he's making so much noise. So for today's video, um, or this 100 subscriber video, I have my motherfucking 100 subscribers party hat fuck, and my motherfucking 100 subscribers whatever the hell this is, and we're about to party, you know? Oh, and my party blowers. Yes, I did get my supplies from Dollar Tree. What about it? I wish you made the noise. So right here I have, oh I don't know if I'm in the camera. Um, my foam brush. I also have my thin brush. So by the way, I mean I mentioned it, but this is my second time recording this video because the footage was lost for the first time. I finished it all the way to the end, then it died. So this is my second time painting this actually. Hopefully it goes a little bit better, but if not, I got my little party blower for any time I panic. Hi, welcome back. Certainly glad you could join us today. I thought today I'd show you a little painting that is so simple that even if you've never painted, you can do this one, guarantee. In fact, it's one of the little paintings that you see in the opening. I thought maybe we'd show you how that one was done. So I'll tell you what, let me show you what I've got up here. Today I just have a plain old double prime canvas and I've painted it with black gesso and allowed the black gesso to dry completely. So it's, it's totally dry. And we're gonna start out today and just use a, we'll just use a paper towel that I've wadded up here. And I'm going to show you how to take gesso. We we'll use black, white, and gray gesso. Got my gray. And different combinations up here. So we'll just take our little paper towel. And I've just got a little plastic tray here that I, that I picked up. And I'm just going I to dip a paper, a paper towel, paper towel see, right into a little bit of gesso. And let's go right up here. First thing we want to do is figure out where our light source is. And all you have to do, maybe it's right here. Just a little Ooh, bit off going fast. Start with the lightest area and begin working outward. See? Maybe this is a joy of paper towel painting. Outward. I never outward, thought outward. about this layering thing because like there. I'm not a painter. Isn't that so fantastic? like I don't layer, I just kind of draw and These then layer are after. Just unbelievable. Not a good idea. Wonderful. Notice I always start back in the center with that brightest color. And if you get I little this with me, but I can't hold on to it while I'm That's working. Oh, right here, right here. When the painting's finished, those little high points will grab the paint no, and it makes beautiful white. things happen. Fight with them. Okay, a little bit over in here. And once again, with this gesso, we don't make any mistakes. Because That's if, right, you, Bob if you paint Ross. an area too light and you don't like it, I make all you have all to the do mistakes, is take a little of the dark that. gesso. Whoop. A little bit of the gray here and there, because I want this to be. This takes a very complicated tool. This is called a foam brush. That's <laughs> so all it is. It's just a little disposable foam brush. Now, where where we have the light area, I'm going to use black gesso. Where we have the dark area, I'll use white gesso and gray in the middle. I want to graduate the color. That's all we're doing. So let's start and do some little background trees. I'll take this little foam brush and go through a little bit of the black gesso. The first time I did it, I think I used too much of this, so I'm gonna try to like tone it down a little bit. Oh, but he uses a lot. And we go up in here, and we have to make our first major decision. I'm not good at that. Where all you do is touch, and as you work down, apply more pressure, more pressure, and automatically your tree trunk will get larger toward the base. Oh, he's doing it so fast. Oh, he's going far too fast for me, buddy. Maybe over here oh, on this side. Do that. <laughs> Whoops. Oh, his already and looks and so good. Why doesn't mine look like that? It just it's looks like lines. You can decide. There's always little baby trees living amongst all these big ones. Oh, it's baby trees. So we can put little, little delicate trees and sticks and twigs. I didn't do that in the first water, one. This will just wherever you think they should live. Oh, limbs already? Exactly where they should Bob. be. Bob! When I was a young pup and went to art school, this is one of the things they had us do to learn to learn to paint. We would take something like template paints just in black I and white. I went to art school. And we had to do entire paintings. I'm not well versed so in that. Ah, I'm not well versed in the art of Bob Ross. So, and then just come back and put an oil glaze basically over the top of them. It's that easy. Oh yeah. Um, 
There's supposed to be colors in this, but it's only in the first part, so I don't have colors. My brush is also a little bit too thick for this, I think. So I feel like my tree branches shouldn't be this thick. And the one that, that you see in the little opening, there's one big monster tree. And we can go back to our little foam brush, put some black gesso on it. And let's go back up in here. And I just use the foam brush to do this. Just figure out where he lives and go. <laughs> and all those noises. And oh, he's going tree. too fast. Oh, no, my other brush. Lives, right? This is Eagle Black. But these little disposable foam brushes were very. <laughs> well, how did he make it look so much like a tree? Color combinations. Transparent and semi transparent. Yeah. That in there a little bit. So we oh, he already did the gray thing. Side. Oh, no. I don't even have my gray eggs, Bob Ross. I think my dog was whimpering because his name is also Bob. Show us how oh, no. to do the little bit. No, background. don't switch already. As I say, I would let it dry between each and every layer. Oh, I don't even now, know what you I were doing. Show you the it's going to be gray. So the part that, part that is in now, he's putting color on it. Um, I didn't get the colors because I didn't have enough of a budget. But I think the gray one looks better than the colored one anyways. So I'm just gonna stick with this. I mean, my colored one doesn't look better than his, obviously. I like the gray, black and white one more anyways. So I think I'm just gonna keep this. And uh, let me show you guys my finished product. Still kind of glossy cause it's new and it's gotta dry and it's getting all over my hand. Ah, but there she is. So I hope you guys enjoyed this second recording of 100 subscriber speed paint. It's a Bob Ross, and I love Bob Ross. He is amazing. I hope you guys enjoyed, and thank you guys so much for subscribing to me. It means a lot that I've gotten to this point, and I'm especially thankful for all the people that will leave comments on here that watch my videos. Um, you know who you are. You leave comments on my videos all the time, and I appreciate it so much, and I think we can only go up from here. Let's hope. Well, thank you guys for watching, and if you want to see me draw something else, put it down in the comment section below. The link to my red bubble is below as well. I put some new pieces on there, like the bubble, no, like the peach girl, and this water girl that I drew on my Instagram. So go ahead and check that out. The link for the Skillshare is also in the comment description below. I think I said comment section below for the first one, too. Anyways, check the description below for the link to the Skillshare, the red bubble, and to my Instagram. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you guys so much. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.